using curves and splines to create glasses with liquids in in 3ds max so once we've sort of started getting on a bit we might want to start looking at putting in some glass objects or any objects that have a more natural or more organic shape the best way i found to do this is actually using nerbs i'm going to use a nerbs curve in this case to create a glass of wine or if you can't do alcoholic beverages to create a class a glass of cranberry juice or elderflower press so we're going to start off getting a CV curve, and we're actually going to be working in this front view today. And what we're going to do to start with, we're just going to start off putting in the shape of half a glass of wine. So roughly wine glass shaped, I'm going to do a fairly posh wine glass, I think. And it's a case of click and move. And then when you click, you will get... It's going to be a very big glass. Um, you will get a white curve that will come down. Now I'm going to keep this quite tight in. This. And I'm just going to start bringing this round to create this shape. Now usually posh wine glasses have one of these little bumps on the stem. So let's have a bump on the stem there. And I'm just going to come down here. And it doesn't matter too much if you don't get the sizing right for the base, because we can update the sizing as we go. I'm just going to bring this back in, and I'm going to stop when I would be halfway through the entire diameter of my glass. This is going to be the center point of the glass, because it is the furthest to the left. And when we use the tool to take it round, it will always take it round from the left. So if I had done this the other way, I would actually have the glass shape on the inside rather than the outside of my object. Now it's just right click to finish making the changes. So there is my wine glass shape. I'm just going to bring my perspective window down a bit so that we can potentially see the whole shape. I might need to zoom this out. And from there, I'm going to go into my Modify tab. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the NURBS settings. The setting we want for this is we want to create a surface, and we want to use a lathe. Click on the lathe, come over and click on your curve that you've just made. And that has put in now a full curve. It goes all the way down into the stem and round and out. At the moment, if we were to fill that with any kind of liquid, it's hollow, the liquid would go all the way down into the base. As this is a glass, we're not too worried about that. And the next thing we are going to do is we are actually going to make our liquid. Now to make this easier, I'm going to rename this shape Alternatively, I'll rename it over here, seeing as how my screen apparently doesn't want to play. And we'll just call this one glass, so I know what this is. I'm now going to clone the glass and make a copy of it. And instead of being glass one, this is going to be the wine. And we'll hit OK on that there. We now have two identical NURBS curves. And in order to see what we're doing, we don't really want both of them visible. So I'm going to hide my glass. You won't see any difference on my screen. But I will now be able to just work on my wine without worrying about crossing over and picking my glass up. And I'm going to go now, expand the NURBS curve at the top and work on the curve CV. Now I put a number of points in to make this purposefully for this particular approach because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select this top point and press the delete key and I'm going to take these bottom points and delete those as well so what I've got now is the inside of the glass but only for the top bit where there would be liquid from there 
I need to come back to my NURBS curve and I need to do create surfaces. This time I want to cap. I've got two holes. I've got a hole at the bottom where it went into the stem and I've got a hole at the top. What you are looking for is a ring of dark blue. It can be quite hard to see, but when you get it, click it and it will put a solid surface onto your glass. It's been particularly hard to see. There it is. But your pointer does change to an arrow when you have reached it. Once you've done that, turn the cap off. Now we just need to make sure that our wine is actually still inside our glass from where we've made those changes. So where we can see the mesh coming through, we can tell that this is now sitting outside of our glass. All we need to do with this is zoom in on our view here, go back to our curve CV, and using our move tool, just tweak the edges of our glass. So I'm just going to bring these ones in a bit. So that's gotten rid of that. And I'm just going to pan this down, get my move tool back. And at the moment, our wine is sitting up very straight where the glass curves. So this one, I'm just going to bring this in. Now that has come out a bit there, so I can pick up the next one down. And I think what I'll actually do is just move this one up so that our curve is now mostly back inside the glass. And it's just a case of tweaking this so that it will fit. There we go. So now we've got, we should have roughly the right shape. This is still coming outside the glass very slightly. So there we go. And now we have our liquid inside our glass. Materials are the next bit to consider. So I'm going to bring up my material editor. And for this one, I am going to use the arch and design. Rather than try and scroll through and find it, I'm going to start typing arch in and select it from arch and design. I'm just going to drag it and drop it onto this top slot so that I'm working in a sensible order. But from the template, I'm going to get a glass as a physical object as a solid object, sorry. In there, it starts off by giving you quite a dark glass. It does mean that you can see it, which is quite useful, but it, doesn't, it does render dark, it doesn't render as a light glass. Um, another option that you would have for this setup would be to use a physical material, and the physical material presets do sometimes come out better when they're used. So there is a physical material with the glass. If you don't want a tinted glass and you want a nice see-through glass, change it to white. Don't worry about the effect it has on there. And we'll click OK. Ideally, what we should do is use a double material and apply the glass physical material to both. So let's do a double-sided material. We'll keep that as a sub-material. And what we'll do is we'll just drag and make a copy of that. So now both sides of our flat plain glass are coloured. For the liquid itself, I'm going to use a physical material again. And I'm actually going to use a glass material with the solid geometry. Only this time I'm going to change the colours, so the colours are a nice cranberry juice or red wine colour. So that should be that should be about right, I think. And you won't see a lot of change on this because we do need to change the other colours as well as we go through. And hopefully what we should see 
although this has come out quite dark, is when this is applied to that wine, is we should get a nice red wine colour. Let's do the render and let's just have a quick look. Now the render of this might not actually do much. We can see some highlights in there. Assuming that's not speckles on my screen. But we don't actually have any. We're looking at transparent things with nothing to see the transparency on. So I'm just going to quickly put in a couple of planes just so we have something we can look at. There's one. I'm going to shift and rotate this. I should have my angle snap on so I can get it to 90 degrees. That will do. That is close enough. I'll do a copy of that. Grab that, move it back and move it up just so we've got something to view our glass against. So if I try the render again, we now have a glass. So the red hasn't really turned out too well. Red wine hasn't really turned out too well in that. Not very happy with that. So instead of using the physical material, I'm going to go to the arch and design. I'm going to select a solid geometry glass again. And I'm just going to set the colours back up. So that's quite darkish red. Set that one to a darkish red and we can see the difference already in this preview. And we'll set a bit of a red tint to this as well. So that should have already made a vast difference to our render and our render quality. So that is now much more see-through to use. And that is the process of setting up some red wine or setting up a glass with liquid in. Same process can be used for setting up any kind of organic shape with any kind of texture.